So our first speaker after the break is a senior planner for the city of Dayton and has been hacking Dayton for several years. In the past year, Tony Kroger was named the lead downtown planner, and it's a position that's going to enable him to really help the city through an exciting period of, of the downtown revitalization. I don't know if you've ever heard of the Grant Deneau Tower, but you're allowed, about to learn a lot more about it. Tony was the lead in helping the skyscraper obtain historic status, which is going to be a really critical step in that building's revitalization. He's also the creator and president of the Dayton Area Deneau Society, or DADS. There's some DADS members here tonight, myself included. And also a developer of its neighborhood's website, shroyerpark.com. Please join me in welcoming Tony Kroger. So I hope you all enjoyed the beer break. If you did, Mr. Paul Deneau, the subject of this presentation, would be very proud. Our architect, developer, mid-century madman of Dayton. So the uh, 1960s were a very nervous, anxious time in, the, in downtown Dayton. I-75 had just been built. I-675 was already being planned. New malls had just been built. And offices were already beginning to follow uh, out to the, uh, to the fringe area. So anxiety was high. It got so bad to where the city's own consultant asked, will downtown move or has it already? Which is a really profound question to ask uh, of a city in that time. So you can tell that anxiety was very high and if there's one thing that I know well, it's anxiety as my wife and, and dad know. <laughs> now, my favorite character of the 1960s, Don Draper, said that if you want to, if, Let's see, if you don't like what is being said, then change the conversation. And, and on a public side, that was mostly done through urban renewal, right? Light, air, space, and the most beautiful surface parking lots you could ever imagine. <laughs> it, was, it was an incredible time. Now, on the, on, the, on the private sector side, Richard Grant and Paul Deneau bought the corner of Fourth and Ludlow, which would ultimately become the Grant Deneau Tower. And uh, they have an interesting relationship, Grant and Deneau, and I like to say that Richard Grant had most of the money and Paul Deneau had a kick-ass way to, uh, to spend it. <laughs> and, and one thing that cannot be understated in the development of the Grant Deneau Tower is really the symbol of confidence that, that it put down for the city of Dayton and downtown at that time. Because like I said, it was a very nervous, highly anxious time in, in downtown Dayton as the suburbs were developing. And here's Paul Deneau and Richard Grant putting their money where their mouth is, really hacking the city. This was Dayton's moonshot, right? And so this, this quote by the foreman, I think, really says it all. We're proud because we're pioneering. Sometimes we feel like the Apollo 8 crew up here. And it's so of its time. It's 1960s. It's a beautiful thing. And uh, these guys were hacking the city, right? These were the hackers of the 1960s. And Paul Deneau was our madman. Now, the Grant Deneau Tower is, uh, was the first modern high-rise in the city of Dayton. It's 22 stories. Its uh, architecture style is uh, somewhat of a Miesian modern uh, style, but its, its main style is new formalism, right? Um, it, it has the classic style with the arches and the columns. And, and when we look at, at how our tower stacks up against the, the known masters of new formalism, Darrell Stone and, 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 and Yamasaki, I think our guy Paul Deneau stands up pretty well. I think it's a fantastic example of new formalism amongst the masters of the style. Darrell Stone, of course, of Sinclair fame, uh, which is here on this slide. So new formalism is found throughout the region. Here's uh, the examples that we see at Sinclair Community College. 11 West Monument is new formalism, which is where the wine gallery is. And my favorite example is the Fifth Third, Fifth, Fifth Third Bank building on Far Hills. Um, so new formalism is found throughout the region, but our guy Paul Deneau is really the pioneer. Now, Paul Deneau was great for one thing, among many. He was always good for, he was always good for a quote. So there's a great opportunity here for anybody who chooses to be competent in his chosen field because there are too many people sitting back on their fat ass. Now, <laughs> we could probably use a few more Paul Deneaus in Dayton, Ohio. I think you guys are Paul Deneaus in, in some way. Now, I know there's a lot of architects here as well, Matt. Uh, you know, he says about architects, you're required to stand on your own two feet, and that's why architects are such great individuals. I think you're a great individual, Matt, and Paul Deneau thought he was a great individual as well, and he was never shy about telling Dayton and the world about that. 
Now, other, uh, other Paul Deneau works, we see the, uh, the Lake Woods Tower on Wilmington Avenue, Campus South Building on, on Irving, uh, the Capri Hotel, uh, which is on Dixie, uh, the radio station on Cincinnati Street, and the Forest and Grand Office Building on Forest, and those are all still standing. Now, Paul Deneau was also a Renaissance man. He owned a team in the World Hockey Association. In fact, he tried to get a team started in Dayton, Ohio, called the Dayton Arrows. Never got the place built where they would play, moved the team to Houston, brought in Gordie Howe, won two championships in Houston. So Paul Deneau, boy, they don't make them like him anymore. The building situation today, the Grant Deneau Tower, 40 West 4th Street, is about 5, 6, 7 percent occupancy. It was 100 percent occupied before Premier bought their place at 2nd Main. So it's really at a crossroads, right? Um, the question, what is the future of, of the Grant Deneau Tower, right? Uh, it's not a great situation in the office environment. Um, but could it be redeveloped? So what do you do with an empty building? You, you landmark it, of course. So, so, we la so we did a local designation as a historic uh, designation for the Grant Deneau Tower um, because it really is a fantastic uh, example of new formalism and it was huge in hacking Dayton in the 1960s when, things, when nerves were high. So the day after it gets designated as historic, I get a phone call from Lisa Deneau, the daughter of Paul Deneau. Paul Deneau d died in 1985, and she says, I'm in tears. Dayton finally appreciates my dad's work. I happen to have this amazing architect, this amazing archive of historic documentation of Paul Deneau. Would you like to have it? I said, sure, we could make use of that. So with that archive, we get it listed on the National Register of Historic Places, which really opens up all kinds of possibilities for the building. You know, uh, historic federal, federal historic tax credits, state historic tax credits, and it really helps bring the building to the forefront. This was the hacked building of the 1960s. And we've had a lot of fun along the way, too. We started the Dayton Area Deneau Society, many of which are here in the crowd. And uh, Paul Deneau, we put one of his great quotes up there. And, and what, so what is, the great, what is the Dayton Area Deneau Society? Well, I don't know. We act like Paul Deneau. We act like mad men, and uh, we pretend to be Paul Deneau, I guess, of the 1960s. But, and also, one of the initiatives, though, that we put forth is an honorary designation for Paul Deneau uh, for Forest Street, right? So let's recognize his his importance in the city of Dayton, and, and, and the fee, the, the application fee for that uh, honorary designation was paid for out of the pockets of city employees that, that really feel that Paul Deneau ought to be recognized. So Paul Deneau, for all his controversial quotes, always saw Dayton as a city of opportunity, and I hope that you do too. He never hesitated to say the great opportunity that we all have in Dayton, Ohio. He was a great architect and he could have done work anywhere in the country, right? And he always chose Dayton because of the opportunity it presents. And I think that's even more prevalent today. Thank you.